महाराष्ट्र बेंगालुर सब जगह तो सब दिन मजूर तक शुरू कर सोनार क्ज सब तो एखान गुजरात कोम्पानी पढ़ाशुना छतु बेचब भूले भिक्षा देवे पांच लक्ष्मी भाण्डार ग्राम मुस्लिम भोट तृणमूल प्राइटे जब करे ना भाई बुझे घूमने कर्मचारी और और 
সবজি বিক্রি করতে কি করবে কিছু করার নেই পেটে এখন খিদে আসে না সব মাথায় থাকে না নর্মাল গ্রাজুয়েশনের তাদের ডান ছিল না এখন বিএড ফিএড করে কি ভ্যালু ওই যে মানে অনলাইনে অনলাইনে পাস করা বই দেখে লেখা কোন দাম নেই সত্যি কথা অনেক প্রাইভেট কোম্পানিতে বলেই দিয়েছে যারা অনলাইন পাস করেছে তাদেরকে কোনো ইন্টারভিউ ডাকতে স্টুডেন্টের তো
surrounding that cystic hyaluronic acid cysteine and hyperplastic lymphoma can be detected in skilled hands. Now, as the baby goes into a second trimester, we have to have a detailed anatomic evaluation between 18 to 22 weeks and a basic cardiac screening. And if there is any suspicion, if she's a pre-gestational diabetic, she has to have an echo. But if she develops a gestational diabetic malaria again, you have to have a possible a detailed echo as well. And then serial growth scans every two to three weeks from 28 week onwards or whenever the gestational diabetes malaria is diagnosed. And at every scan, we just can't go away with just doing the growth parameters. You have to assess the lacquer volume for polyhydramnos, fetal dropplers, and fat assessment possibly. Why am I saying that I'll come to that? And as I said, because these women are at risk of developing ventricular hypertrophy and septal hypertrophy, we do have, uh, have an argument for having a fetal echo also in the third trimester. Why do we want to have fetal growth? Because it affects glycemic control. Sometimes we find women who come in with third trimester for the routine scan, we find they have polyhydramnos large for gestational age, and prospectively when we screen them, they have we've been diagnosed with gestational diabetes. So that is also a screening method. It's a valuable prediction as how what are the favorable outcomes has implications for treatment, whether we need tighter control or less tight control. You can anticipate monitor problems depending upon the weight, which is not very accurate, and obviously anticipate adolescent metabolic issues depending on the weight. Now, issues with fetal weight, as I said, this is important because it is just not the estimated fetal weight we are looking at. We are looking at the crude composition of fat mass and fat free mass. So the common formula that we use for estimated fetal weight is derived from normal populations. And here we have altered body compositions which we are not taking into consideration. So when we estimate the fetal weight, the errors in estimated fetal weight can range anywhere from 10% to 25%. And the fetal estimation, as I said, the accuracy is limited by the operator who is doing the scan, technical measurement errors, and lack of incorporation of the fat source in these fetal weight calculations. And when you do the scan, then she should have another 10 days of therapy that itself will increase the fetal weight because these large for gestational age babies, they gain approximately 15 grams per day. So, uh, how can we predict this? A fetal medicine foundation has uh, uh, given us a uh, software system where we can predict microsomia, we can put all these metabolic and fetal factors, history factors, and we can get a detection rate of almost uh, you know, 33% or 34%, depending on the biochemical markers we use, for a false positive rate of 5 or 10%. Similarly, when you are looking at the estimated fetal weight, if you add adiposity complex, that is the abdominal wall thickness, and the thigh adiposity, which is now coming into play, and if this is about the 98 centile, and that is abnormal at 38 to 39 weeks, and the cutoff is actually 8.1 millimeter, and studies have shown that if this adiposity complex is higher, they have higher incidence of birth weight more than 4 kilograms, prolonged labor, and increased labor of cesarean sections. So this was a study shown where you exactly measure the abdominal wall thickness and also the female uh, thigh adiposity. Even the Indian study from uh, Dr. Umar Ramadan, they had showed that the increase, we can predict these women having a total wall thickness at 20 weeks, and this relates the diagnosis of gestational diabetes in life for almost four weeks. So I can actually scan if you are thinking these women are going to be at high risk of large for gestational age, you measure these, and you can find out whether they will be uh, at risk of developing gestational diabetes in life. Predicting stillbirth is still something we have not taken control of, which is a big thing, but studies, especially HPOT 2018, have said have not, have not specifically demonstrated an increase in stillbirth with well controlled, diet controlled GDM, which we classify as A1 GDM, that is requiring diet, and A2 GDM, which is requiring insulin, before 40 weeks. So, risk of stillbirth is good in these women where they are well controlled. But of course, the, it is difficult to predict these, and whatever we have is mostly empirical. You need to closely monitor these processes with abnormal growth patterns. You have to rely on these women for a good big uh, picture and you know, trust the mother on her instincts. If she's saying that the baby is not moving, you have to take into account that it's out of there for a CTG. Twice more, twice weekly doctors with the growth is really accelerating with internal CTG in between because these are short term reassurances that the baby is going to be fine. Uh, you do one scan today, and if you call her back, back up to the or 10 days, you might have lost or missed the boat and lost the baby. And obviously, when these patients go into labor, they need to continue CTG monitoring to uh, diagnose and lethal distress. So, this is a case which we recently uh, uh, had. Yes, sir.
She was uh, diagnosed at 26 weeks. Initially, her nutritional therapy subsequently put on insulin. And it is being in at least that the abdominal circumference at the 20 weeks of our team are in CR. And then, at the moment, it's the most accelerating. She was put on insulin. We asked her how her sugars went. She was a very educated woman. She knew what she was doing. But she said, my sugars are fine. Now, obviously, this is showing something that it is not fine. So we don't know whether to rely on compliance issues or what is happening. We know that the post that she was obviously showing her fasting sugars. And we clearly see the post that the sugars are not important. But her AC was about the 90 books and her annual pickup index on the right chart was much above the 90 books and like as that would happen auxiliary while the clinician had a still work on hand and everything happens for the reason she ruptured her memory for 35 days. We had an emergency session and she delivered a 3.8 kilogram baby at 35 weeks which is obviously a hand was only baby. So the key messages for today is the fetal surveillance starts from the first trimester. You have to screen for these issues in the first trimester itself. Do a detailed anatomy scan and a fetal echo. Serial growth estimations depending on glycemic control. You have to have a tight glycemic control, especially looking at the post prandial sugars. Overall prognosis is good with well controlled. It's obviously a multidisciplinary approach when we have the large issues. A diabetic colleagues here and us with a normal neonatologist can require. Best strategies, of course, to you know, prevent all this is to predict and prevent GPM, which is the main issue here. We are in the time of slow motion disaster of obesity and GDM, so it's important to predict and prevent these large gestational age. Because it is important to understand that the story is just not about birth rate, but about fetal programming. And this is a unique time in medicine and we, uh, great, we have to pay attention where we can predict future disease and prevent it across generations. And as our late master says, focus on the features of the future, which we have to do by widespread implementation of simple strategies that we can apply for our government everywhere. Thank you so much for your patience.